Greetings, and welcome to another edition of Intimate Conversations with Jesus from the Gospel of John. Hello, my name is Derek Williams, and I'm the Associate Minister for the Great Oaks Church of Christ. Now, this is part two of a study entitled, Do You Want to Get Well? And this question was asked by Jesus to a man who had been unable to walk for 38 years. And this is another example for us to learn and how to have discussions with people who need to be connected to God. Now let's read our text to review what we learned in our last lesson. This is John chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for the feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which is in Aramaic, is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, Someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. Now, the the Bible tells us that this miracle took place on a Saturday, according to verse 9. And if there was any day of the week when people's lives should have been changed for the better by the Savior, it should have been on a Sabbath. However, the Jews had turned the Lord's Sabbath into a burden rather than the blessing that God intended. Let's spend a few moments now examining the Sabbath. Let's see why some of the Jews were not celebrating this miracle of the lame man's healing. In fact, they were soured by what had happened to this former lame man. In the latter part of verse 9, we see this. The day on which this took place, the healing, was the Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. The emotions the Jews felt about this life-changing event was not joy, but indignation. They thought, So what if you've been healed after 38 years of being an invalid? You can't go around carrying your mat because it's the Lord's day. Now you want to talk about having your priorities out of line. These people stop to criticize rather than congratulate the man for the good thing that had happened to him. Now why was it the case? Well, it was because it was the Sabbath day. You see, Saturday was the day of worship for the Jews, and God told them not to work on the Sabbath in the Ten Commandments. However, the Jews had changed God's prohibition against working to mean the Lord outlawed all human activity on the Sabbath, which was not true. Have you ever read just how silly the Jews had become concerning the Sabbath by the first century when Jesus lived? They had 39 different laws, 39 different categories regulating what could and could not be done on the Sabbath. In fact, there were even 613 specific ways you could violate the Sabbath according to Jewish tradition. Let me give you a few examples. The rabbis taught in Jesus' day that it was unlawful if a man wore a needle in his robe on the Sabbath. Why? Because he would be carrying a burden on the Lord's day. They also taught that a man couldn't wear artificial teeth or a wooden leg on the Sabbath. Why? Same reason. If a flea was gnawing on your leg, you had to let it be. Why? Because that would be hunting on the Sabbath. And they also taught that the only time that you could take up your bed on the Sabbath was in a house fire. So using that logic, if a man's house had been on fire... It would have been all right for him to carry his bed here in John chapter 5. But since Jesus had only healed him from being lame for 38 years, 
that he was going straight to hell for it. Now, who made those rules for the Sabbath? God or the Jews? Well, obviously it was the Jews. What should we learn from the way that the Jews were more interested in the lame man carrying his mat on the Sabbath than they were in rejoicing for his miraculous recovery? Brethren, we learn we must never have a law over love mentality when we're talking to people who are spiritually lame. Our Lord wasn't just flexing his miraculous muscle by healing a lame man. No, he was teaching a lesson on the power of proper priorities. Jesus removed the shackles of disability and doubt from this man. However, the legalists were more concerned about whether they were breaking one of their traditions. Now, what was their problem? They had a misplaced sense of priorities. When the Jews learned that someone else had told this man to break one of their traditions, they wanted to know who it was in verse 12. But the man didn't know who Jesus was because the Lord had slipped away in the commotion. And that brings us now to what I want to call the sin. In verses 14 and 15, we're going to see the real reason Jesus healed this man and how the Lord used it to have a conversation about this man's most pressing spiritual need. We read in verse 14, Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said, See, you're well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and he told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. Jesus knew the right order in turning people's lives around. He didn't start his conversation with the Samaritan woman by talking about her problem with adultery. Remember, he asked her for a drink. And Jesus didn't start out by criticizing this lame man's sin problem. He asked this man if he was ready to get well. Jesus wanted to help the Samaritan woman and this lame man to see their greatest problem, their sin disease. Now, my friends, if we are generally interested in helping people, we've got to build a bridge to them first, just like Jesus did. The world is lame spiritually, and they need you and me to help them walk in the light. The compassion of Christ, rather than the criticism of the Jews, will always be more effective in helping us have productive conversations with lost people. We can't take anyone to heaven by dragging them through hell first. When you read about Jesus, notice how he built bridges to people's hearts and minds before he confronted their sin. The Savior healed this man and then pointed out his sin. A bridge was built by love to bring the gospel. People must hear the truth, but they cannot hear it until it is spoken in love. You know, for 38 years, this man was lame, but his entire life was changed because Jesus was there to lead him not primarily out of physical disability, but out of spiritual disability. A store tacked a sign above its door that read, Puppies for Sale. You know, signs like that have a way of uh, attracting small children. And sure enough, a little boy appeared underneath the store owner's sign. He asked, how much are you going to sell the puppies for? But the store owner replied, well, anywhere from $30 to $50. Well, the little boy reached into his pocket and he pulled out some change. I have $2.37, he said. Can I please look at them? The store owner smiled and whistled. And out of the kennel came Lady, the mother dog, who ran out down the aisle, followed by five teeny tiny balls of fur. Well, one puppy was lagging considerably behind, and immediately the little boy said, Well, what's wrong with that little dog? Well, the store owner explained, Well, the veterinary has examined this little puppy, and he's discovered that it does not have a hip socket. It will always limp. It will always be lame. Well, the little boy became very excited. He said, that's the little puppy I want 
to buy. But the store owner said, no, son, you don't want to buy that little dog. If you really want him, I'll, I'll just give him to you. Well, that little boy got quite upset. He looked straight into the eye of the store owner and pointed his finger and said, I don't want you to give him to me. That little dog is worth as much as all the other dogs, and I'll pay full price. In fact, I'll give you $2.37 now and 50 cents a month until I have paid for him completely. Well, the store owner said, son, you really don't want to buy that dog. He's never going to be able to run and jump and, and play with you like the other puppies. To this, the little boy reached down and rolled up his pant leg and he revealed a badly twisted, crippled left leg supported by a big metal brace. He looked at that stoner and softly replied, Well, I don't run so well myself. And that little puppy, he's going to need someone who understands. This is the compassion that Christ has called us to share in conversation with those who are spiritually lame. See, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, God made him, that is Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You see, when God allowed Jesus to be put on the cross in our place, the Father crippled his own son with sin so that you and I might walk free. And there is no one who understands our struggles like Jesus. He's the only one who can truly help the helpless. You know, on Monday morning, after an all-weekend bender, a good question to ask people who are suffering from a hangover is, do you want to get well? That sounded like a ridiculous question to ask that lame man. It also may sound crazy to your worldly friends. But it's a question worth asking, just like the Jesus did. And it changed the eternal destiny of a man whose life had been destroyed by sin. But it was rebuilt by God's love. It can do the same in 2024 when we're willing to have intimate conversations for Jesus, the great physician. If this message was helpful to you, please push the like button. The more likes these lessons receive, well, the more YouTube will promote them to others. Also, please push the subscribe button so that when a new lesson is posted in this series, you'll be immediately notified of the new content that's available. This will also get more promotion on YouTube so that more people can see intimate conversations with Jesus from the Gospel of John. Thanks again. My name is Derek Williams. And this message was brought to you by the Great Oaks Church of Christ.